Football, College Football. I'm your host, Grayson Grunhafer, and today we're going to examine something that happened in the Pac-12 this week. Uh, Oregon State President J.T. Murty went on, talked about some of the new things that are going on with Oregon State, uh, but specifically what's going on with the Pac-12 and their new media rights deal uh, that they're still trying to work on. We don't have any answers quite yet on it. But she provided quite a bit of insight, quite a bit of talking points. Um, So we're going to kind of go through a couple of things that she said. I'm going to examine kind of my thoughts on those things that she did say because they do add some insight. And they add some, I think, clarification to some of the things that we've talked about over the past few weeks uh, with the Pac-12 with conference expansion. So um, in general... A big thing that she talked about initially was the unequal revenue sharing. We've talked about this in the ACC. We've talked about it many times before, but again, this is just more confirmation on the simple fact that this is real. Like there are schools asking for this unequal revenue sharing. The top schools in these leagues are sitting to themselves going, hey, you know, we're running this league essentially. Why aren't we getting a bigger cut of the pie than everyone else? And, and I think that's uh, one of those things that continues to be a theme of expansion and realignment. So to me, her talking about that and the fact that they've had these conversations, they've been open and honest about them. Um, you know, I think she mentioned the fact that at the end of the day, they all want the Pac-12 to remain. They want to figure out ways to make sure that that happens. But I think in general, just this idea of unequal revenue sharing is not something that I think can be solved. I do think it's a deal breaker. And, you know, you might look at it and say, hey, but for some of these schools, that's not a deal breaker. Well, for Oregon State, Washington State, you know, maybe Cal and Stanford, maybe it's not a deal breaker because for them, I think it's just more about keeping the Pac-12 around. But when you look at some of the other schools, you look at Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, Utah, you know, are those schools really going to be okay with that? Um, you know, some of those schools might be above the threshold line, but a few of them aren't. And so I think that's an issue. Uh, and at the end of the day, once again, if you're the one of those schools that's going to lose a share of what you were promised in the Pac-12, there's no reason for you to not start examining other options. And why would you sign anything that ensures your future is tied to this percentage number Um, when you could look elsewhere for more stability uh, for your school going forward. So again, I I continue to think it's a problem. It causes a clear divide between, you know, the bigger brands and the smaller brands. It, it just basically says, Hey, we're worth more than you. We matter more than you. So we should get paid more than you. And then not only are you creating this separation nationally, right? Cause the PAC 12 right now, ACC, you're behind the big 10, the SEC. But now what you're doing is the top schools in your league can get closer to competing. But now those lower schools, you're basically taking any shot away from them of competing by making uh, that revenue, just that disparity. So uh, massive. Next thing she talked about. So she mentioned that the conference is looking into a mixture of streaming and linear broadcasting. We've mentioned this a few times. Again, my thoughts on that are as long as the lean is heavily in favor of linear standard broadcasting, I'm cool with it. Like having that mixture is fine. And I think that that's fine and dandy what she said on that. But my issue is, is that a lot of the reports are that it's going to be heavily leaning towards streaming. And I don't think that's sustainable. I really don't. I don't think the money's going to be there. I think you're probably going to be looking at something like 20 million, maybe 25 million on your contract if you're just going to be relying, you know, 75, 25 in favor of streaming. I just don't think it works well. And I don't think it will work well. And so while a lot of people are talking about how streaming is the new way for live sports and it's going to be a huge deal going forward, there's a reason that. The Big Ten, the SEC, even the Big 12 aren't heavily reliant on streaming. And that's because currently live sports are still mainly on broadcasting. And you're not going to want to get rid of you know, that 230 CBS game for the SEC. That's not going anywhere. These big games, when you get Texas and Texas A&M on Thanksgiving, that's not going to be on streaming. That's going to be on TV. That's just the facts right now and for the foreseeable future in my eyes. So again, pay attention to that. That's going to be a big deal in how much the money uh, differentiates between them and the Big 12 um, and the other conferences. I think she mentioned something that was 
interesting and just kind of confirms a lot of the things that I think many have talked about, but also it continues to raise some questions, I think. And her quote was, we understand that we share geography, we share culture, and we share a culture of academics. And I do believe that the Pac-12 is focused on that and the Pac-12 is trying to sell um, the current schools there. You know, this is our vision stay a part of that. This is how, you know, we hold ourselves this is what we all believe in. Um, and the schools that they're looking at, I think are going to try to, they're going to try to get schools that embody these things as well. Uh, the things that this conference shares, especially geographically, but I do think culture and the academic part are huge. And I, I think that's a big reason why a lot of people push back on the idea that, you know, Oregon and Washington could go to the Big 12 or this big merger between the Pac-12 and the Big 12. And those people are right to push back to an extent because everything that I've heard, read, er everything that I believe, I don't think Cal and Stanford would even consider going to the Big 12. Doesn't make sense for them. And that's fine. It might not make sense right now. But if you're not getting a big share on this next deal, it might start to make a lot more sense. And that's why I've said that with Oregon and Washington, because those are the two biggest brands. Those are the two that I find to be the most appealing. But the problem for them is, can they get through that culture and academic um, kind of belief and say, hey, but the money is better in the Big 12 or in the Big 10, whatnot? Um, that's going to be something to think about. I also think it's big for the Pac-12. If they're going to consider expanding, they're going to try to find schools that fit these beliefs as well. Finally, and this was something that I had a, I just have a huge pushback with. She said, there's money in football. There's some money in men's basketball, but athletics is more than these two things. I mean, it depends on how you look at athletics and how you look at this next media deal, because the simple fact of the matter is Football is the driving force for all of these decisions, and men's basketball is starting to become, I think, more talked about in these um, conversations, especially with the Big 12 looking at you know possibly getting basketball-specific schools only, like a Gonzaga. The Pac-12 has been looking into that as well. So I understand that, but if you're going to tell me that you think these media rights deals and these things that are going to provide sustainability and money to your conference are going to come from you know, swimming or track and field or gymnastics, you're not right. Like you're just not. And, and that's, that's the deal here is that these things, I understand you want to have this athletic culture. And I also understand for your fan base, it's great to have all these sports doing really well. And that adds to the excitement as you go throughout the entire school year. It's like, Hey, we're really good at this. We're good at this. We're good at this. That's great. But it, from a money standpoint and from what this next media deal looks like, there is a bigger emphasis on football and men's basketball. And to be honest, a huge part of every athletic department, a huge part of every uh, hiring of an athletic director comes down to those two things and specifically football. So that was just one thing that, you know, I understand it, but I also, there's some pushback to that. And to try to say that, you know, football isn't, doesn't matter as much as some people say, I don't find that to be true. And I think you're seeing it when you look around the country at the Big Ten, the SEC, were they really selling, you know, their, you know, gymnastics or wrestling packages? No, they were selling football and some men's basketball and maybe in some specific instances like um, the SEC, maybe, maybe baseball, maybe if you're going to go down that rabbit hole. Um, but at the end of the day, I found a lot of her comments to be really insightful I think when you're looking at the Pac-12 and you're looking at everything these presidents, athletic directors are saying, it's so important to listen and also find some takeaways from them and see how those translate throughout college sports in general because the Pac-12 is not the only one that has this standard uh, and this culture that they've built. When you look around the country, you look at the Big 12, they're, they're going to have a culture. The SEC has a culture. All these things matter and all these things will matter when it comes to expansion and realignment going forward so that's it for today um thanks for listening next week we'll talk a little bit more potentially about expansion if there's more news we're also going to try to talk about a little bit more spring football as we're getting closer and closer to spring football season um, but thanks for listening this has been crystal ball college football